we're going. So, I mean... The countdown has started. Sure, pretty sure, uh, CG Royal is... He's gonna be more BM. He's gonna talk a lot of BM. Yeah, I definitely feel that coming on. I feel like he will BM on me, just like he did the last, uh, player. I, you know, I, I really don't... I don't appreciate how he insults the other players and, you know, I just... I feel like he should not do that at all. But, you know, I can't stop him. You know, it's his play style, I guess. He likes to be aggressive. And I I, I can't take that good luck half of series right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have the, mm -hmm. the first half player lined up. Eddie Royal, bottom right, versus the Zerd player, Tony, top left. Um... <laughs> I don't think Tong's familiar with the map. He just took a look at the whole map in his viewport. I was looking at his uh, POV, his point of view, and he looked at the whole <laughs> map in his viewport. <laughs> so I don't think he's yeah. familiar with this. Yeah, that is very unfortunate for him. Um, uh, you know, I feel like it's it's better to you know experience the map and actually play in it to you know, have a sense of what you're gonna do and how you're gonna macro up instead of just you know blindly playing in the map. You know, I feel like you are right about this. So this is a new map for him, so it might you know bring some problems in the future, but we'll see. Sir, uh, Gosu, you you are breaking up a little bit. I don't know if it's. Uh what the problem is or anything, but um, you are definitely uh, breaking up a little bit over there on your side. No, I'm sorry, uh, am, I, am, I, am I still breaking up right now? Yeah, you, you, you break up just a little bit, like uh, for, for a little bit there when you were talking, you weren't get coming the whole way through. I'm just going to let you know that right now, just in case uh, I say something to you and I'm like, what? What did you just say? You know, okay, so... <laughs> yeah. no, no problem, man, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, Anyways, we have the uh, pro block for the uh, a drone in the natural of a tong. He does manage to get the pylon down to block. Uh, overlords are on the way are on their way across the map. Uh, obviously, this is a two spawn map, so you, you're going to know where your opponent is. Pylon was canceled for 25 minerals back, and he will bring the drone over. Ah, he does not put the. Uh, uh, hatchery down at the uh, natural, he puts it down at the third. Great job by uh, our Zerg player. That was really good. I mean, most uh, low league players, they really like wait. Like, they don't go for the. Uh, they don't wait down at the third. Yeah, that is actually um, that is actually a good point. If you if you see a Protoss player attempting to prevent you from taking your natural, I would suggest just go straight to your third right away. Um, you know, they will, you know, either try to delay your expansion as long as possible without building a pylon, or they will lay down a pylon. You just have two scenarios that are just, you know, pretty bad for you. You don't want to, you know, sit there with your drone and try to follow his troll. It's not going to do you any good. You want to just shoot right to your third and expand. And another kind of uh, tactic that a lot of other players do is bring down two or three workers to prevent uh, a pylon being built and then natural. So, like guys, let me let me hang up the call. Let me let me call you guys and let me see if that fixes the problem. Sure. All right. Good. Yeah, uh, there's still, like, problems right now. Hold on, let me let me see when AKA gets in. AKA, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Good, good. All right, keep going. All right, yeah, and in regards to uh, predicting that CG Royal will do the same build, I was completely right. Um, this is a form of play style that he does versus every Zerg matchup that he does. Um... I, I've yet to see him do a Forge Fast Expand versus Zerg. He loves to do this type of play. Um, you know, he sets up his second and pushes up with about maybe four or five centuries Stalkers, Zealots, and absolutely destroys the Zerg player. I, I just, I, 
I can't really say, you know, any kind of strategy that would help the Zerg player. It's, it's devastating how powerful this build is. So as you see, he is going to uh, attempt to harass the Zerg player. And as, I, as you can tell, the Zerg player has virtually nothing to stop it. Nothing at all. Yeah, the Zerg was uh, busy macroing up. He has three bases down. He has three hatcheries down, so he's been droning up this entire time. In fact, right right now, he finally decides to put down 16 Zerglings uh, to pop out. He has three Zealots and three... Oops, I gotta be on busy. He has three Zealots and three uh, Sentries on the way to the uh, natural of the Zerg player. Meanwhile, behind it is coming three Stalkers. So three, three, and three here for the uh, Protoss. Uh, Force... And, and Force fills the ramp, so the Zerglings cannot come down the ramp. <laughs> Those uh, force fields were unfortunately terrible. I feel like they... Those were probably the worst force fields I've ever seen, actually. Um, that did not, you know... That, that just... That should have not been used that way. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else agrees with me. Um, in regards to how badly those force fields were laid down. Um, that is unfortunate to have the stalkers in front of, in front of those uh, speed lines. Although uh, Tony is actually able to hold this off. Uh, fortunately for the Protoss player, he did not expect this at all. He expected uh, you know, a really weak defense, you know, and that is not the case. Yep, all those Zerglings were able to take care of that uh, little army of uh, Protoss. The Protoss now moves, uh, turns around his other two Stalkers that were heading to the uh, Zerg base, and now they are back at home. Meanwhile, this Zergling uh, counter-attack is on its way south, and going into the natural now, he's going to just straight-up attack this army of the, Zer of the Protoss, and uh, those force fields were okay. He was able to lock himself behind the force fields there and keep the Zerglings away. Meanwhile, the Zerglings that were trapped on the other side were taken out by the sentries and stalkers that were behind the force fields there in front of this uh, uh, robotics facility. Does he have uh, force fields? Yes, he does. He has a couple of force fields. Boom, boom. Two go down, three go down. Locks out the Zerglings again. I didn't really oh, that the Zerg... That is... That is the worst. Uh, that, <laughs> that is just absolutely devastating. That pylon was not reinforced. Uh, you know, I would have expected better play, but that was just absolutely terrible. Um, you know, you, you can't... You can't have all your force fields. You know, just... I, I really wish I could say something good about this player right now that Protoss is doing, but... Everything I've seen from this so far is not, you know, it's just not impressive at all. It's not, he's not going to be able to hold this off. He's, he's going to be harassed constantly. His, his economy is down. He lost a lot of workers. This is going to be devastating for the Protoss player. Yeah, Protoss is down to 24 workers, 30, 40. Ooh, look, look at the eye. 34 to 24 in worker tab, but 44 are going to be on the way. Uh, he will have 44 eventually. Looking at the uh, production tab, uh, 13 more drones coming out for... That's that's the drones that I was talking about right there. And if you look at the workers killed, 14 workers killed for the Zerg player, only 4 for the Protoss right now. As I'm looking at the Protoss player's base, uh, does that seem sealed off to the left side near the uh, factory? I, I, I'm pretty sure that seems that it's sealed off. Uh, but if it's not, that could also present a problem because there's two entrances into his base right now if he wants to move out and i feel like at this point he has to he is so far behind an economy and he has to do something now yep the, the zerg has the uh, map presence he has zerglings at the zonlaga tower he has vision he can see when this protoss decides to move out in fact he's going to see it right now he should have vision of it right now the zerglings are on their way to attack oh oh, oh. and the protoss turns around so the Protoss has uh, two Immortals, has um, five sentries here, six sentries here actually, a couple of zealots, zealots on the ground. He is getting a Robotics Bay, so he will have Colossus out then. Uh, meanwhile, the Zerg is just macroing up like a boss. He has a fourth hatchery down right now. Uh, he is, uh, let's see, look at his main base. He has a Roach Warren down his main base, has a macro hatch in his main base. At the natural has nothing, and at the third base has nothing. So no more tech for the Zerg player, but that's all the tech he needs right now. He's so far ahead. Yeah, correct. Um, you know, I, I would like to see the Protoss player bring in a probe to, uh, you know, build a proxy pylon, but I think he just hopes that this army will defeat the Zerg player, and 
it really comes down to how good he force fields uh, the Zerg's army. But, I mean, wow, th those force fields are actually pretty impressive. Um, not sure if this can actually win him the game or, n or not, because I feel like this is a pretty strong army. It is a very strong army. In fact, he, I don't think... Yeah! Oh, oh wow. Uh, Royal, being, Royal giving the preemptive stuff. GG. He thinks he has yeah. his game won. He's right in the natural. This, that natural should be able to go down. I don't think there's anything here that the uh, Zerg can do to uh, stop the natural from going down. Yeah, I, I... Wow, that was just amazing how great... How great of a play style that was. I can't believe he came back from that. I honestly cannot believe. That was very impressive. All right, GG from the uh, Zerg.